So this is my favorite simulation. You uh, see me use this to demonstrate the standing waves. And um, so, so I do that quite extensively in the recorded video. So I won't do that here. And, um, and what I want you to demonstrate uh, first is um, the idea of a wave propagation. And um, so, well, that's a wave of propagation, I guess. <laughs> I move one end of the string here and you see a shape that's moving across this wave. Now, um, there are some things I can do here uh, only because it's a simulation. Uh, it, uh, uh, simulation makes it uh, easy to idealize, uh, get rid of things that make measurements difficult. The biggest thing is the damping. That's the, this is simulating the real world, the physical processes that would uh, take away mechanical energy. So I got rid of the damping. So which means if I set up one wave, it'll go on forever. It'll just bounce back and forth between these two forever. So it's pretty to look at, <laughs> but I guess uh, it's kind of uh, hard to demonstrate what I want to demonstrate with this. So let me do this. This bouncing back and forth, it kind of gets a little bit, um, it complicates the picture. So I'm going to do this uh, setup that's rather difficult to have in the real world, which is a, a string on which wave can travel with no end, or I guess the end where the end is really far away so that we don't have to worry about it. So once I set off a wave, it goes through and then it's gone. It doesn't come back. It's kind of easy, easy to show. And this manual control, while it's nice, uh, using this, I can either set off a very gentle wave or I can set off a very sudden wave it takes a lot of control and it's hard to do it in a reproducible way. So I want to use a pulse to generate a wave. This is a lot easier. I just have to press a button and then it produces this. And I think I'm gonna keep us on slow motion uh, most of this demonstration just because, so that I have more time to talk and time to press on buttons. So, so this is a kind of simplified depth version of wave propagation. You have, uh, this is the wave or a pulse wave, and you see it propagate, move from left to right. And what's moving to left to right is this shape. If you're looking at any particular matter element, uh, look at this uh, green bead, for example, it's not moving to the right. It actually moves just up and down. So over time, what does the moving is, um, it's not these individual materials themselves, it's this shape. And I think if you think about it more carefully, you can also see that uh, there's an energy that's moving across this string because when it's uh, stretched out this way at rest, then it's kind of at the lowest energy state. But as these beads start to move up and down, there's some kinetic energy and as it stretches more, there's a more potential energy. And where that energy is located, it's moving from where I generate the pulse, that's where I put in the energy, to the right. So, so that's a wave propagation. Now, uh, let me do this. I'm gonna bring up a timer so that I can measure how quickly this wave uh, moves across this string in a more precise way. Uh, let me do it uh, this way. I'm going to try to do this measurement with the top of the wave. Um, so I need to generate the wave and stop and kind of, okay, okay. I think that's right now at the top of the wave. So um, what I can do is I can measure the amount of time that it takes for this top of the wave to travel across to, let's say, the this side of the window. So. Uh, let me start the timer. And you will see that it doesn't actually start moving yet because this time is tied to the simulation time. So it's when I advance the simulation, you see the time move. So let me make, let the simulation advance. And I'm going to pause it around here and move it step by step until this top is at the edge of the window. So that's how long it takes for the wave to travel uh, from here here about 1.06 seconds and and the 
quantity that's uh, most interesting is not the amount of time, but the, the speed, the wave speed, wave propagation speed. And if I really wanted to calculate the time, uh, calculate the speed, then what I can do is I can, you know, set up the ruler, have the distance, you know, distance divided by time and do all that. Uh, but since those calculations take time, I think I'll just use the amount of time measured as a way of getting a sense of is the wave propagation speed changing? And if it is changing, how is it changing? So if the wave starts to move faster, then, um, then this time would be shorter. If a wave starts to move slower, then this time would be, uh, would be higher. It'll take more time. So let me see if I can try to figure out, oh, let me <laughs> actually write down the, time <laughs> that we had before so that I don't forget. I think it was 1.06. Let me write it down here so that um, so that I don't forget it. Uh, T, I don't know, uh, one, um, 1.06 seconds. And what I'm gonna try to do is, I'm gonna try to uh, make this wave move, um, uh, move faster. So I'm going to see if, uh, what can I change to uh, make this wave propagate uh, through this distance faster. Um, let me just try a few ideas, knowing that they won't work. <laughs> but let me try a few ideas. So one thing that I can do is I can try to have the pulse move up and down faster. I can achieve that by having a shorter pulse width. So uh, let me do that. Oh. <laughs> okay, I need to... Can I just the space bar do anything? No, it doesn't. Um, all right. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay. Um, wait. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. So I can't quite use the top of the pulse because I can't move between here and here fast enough. Let me use the uh, left edge. Actually, you know, it's going to be easier to use the right edge. So let me do it this way. I'm gonna, just going to let it pass. And what I can do is with the simulation paused, I can run the timer. And the moment I, I think a simulation might start when I start the pulse. Yeah. And uh, this right edge of the pulse started at the same time as the timer. So I'm going to try to stop the simulation when the right edge is right at this edge of the window. So I wait, wait, wait. OK, almost there. OK, there. It's beginning to move there. 1.05 second. Hmm. It didn't quite uh, change that much. I, I think I moved, changed the pulse width from 0 0.5 second to 0 0.2. So it I moved the pulse width itself quite a bit, but the amount of time travel, it didn't, it barely budged at all, uh, 1.05 seconds. So, and that difference is probably just, uh, um, you know, measurement error. So, all right, uh, let me just try one more value. Uh, let me try to make the pulse width wider, one second. Um, so I'm gonna use the top of the pulse again. Um, so let me do it this way. So, okay, and when it's right at the top, okay, it's right at the top. Let me start the timer and I'll run this simulation until the top of the wave is right at the edge. Then 1.05 again, it did barely changed. So apparently changing the pulse width doesn't change the wave speed. So let me just bring this back to what we started out with, 0 0.5 seconds. And, um, and there are other things we can try to change. Um, for example, the amplitude, maybe the, um, so the amplitude controls basically how much energy goes into the pulse. Maybe if there's a, if there's more energy, it'll move faster. So let's give that a try. Um, so I'll do the pulse stop and at the top. I'll do measure it similarly as how I measure the T1. The only difference is that I double the amplitude of double, not quite double. I increase the amplitude of pulse quite a bit. Okay. 
Oh, all right, that's a little bit past the top. Run the timer here and let the simulation run and stop it when this top is right at the edge or close enough to the edge. Right there, 1.06 second, the same time that I was measuring before. So apparently if the pulse has a larger amount of energy in it, it still doesn't make it move faster. And uh, I'll just do one more to demonstrate that it doesn't change. <laughs> um, and what you will see takes to, to change the wave speed, wave speed has a, in this sense is analogous, similar to the natural oscillation frequency. So with the natural oscillation frequency, you actually had to change the parameter of oscillation. And with the wave speed too, you have to change um, not just the, how the wave is set up, but you have to change the properties of the medium itself. So let me just uh, finish with this and then we'll get, okay, that's right at the top. But on the timer and and um, yeah, 1.06 second again. So, so I need to, so these two parameters didn't do anything to change the wave speed. So um, the other two parameters that I have remaining are, uh, I guess I could actually uh, introduce a damping that would uh, make this simulation more realistic. So let me see uh, what introducing damping does. Uh, let me just uh, check to make sure that with the damping, the wave will still reach the edge because it might not, okay, it does. So let's just see with some damping introduced, maybe damping will slow down the wave. So uh, I'll start and then do the same routine as before. Okay, that's uh, right at the top, run the timer. And you will see that the top is right here, 1.06 second. So introducing damping, you can see that it does take out the energy. The amplitude of wave is going down as it travels across, but it doesn't actually slow down the wave in the sense of reducing the wave speed. Um, so I have one parameter remaining. <laughs> so this tension. So when I change tension, you won't quite see it. Um, directly on the screen because it's really a measure of how taut the string is. So um, as long as it's taut, uh, it doesn't quite show how, how much tension there is. But it started out at the highest tension. Let me put it at middle amount of tension and let's see if the wave speed has changed. Um, so same deal as before. Okay. It's uh, okay at the top. Now I'm running the timer and I'm gonna try to stop it when this is right at the edge. It feels slower. Yeah. So this time it's taken a 1.76 second. So with a lower amount of tension, low tension, the amount of time it's taken to travel the same distance is 1.76 second. So amount of tension affects the um, affects the wave speed. And um, I guess the, the phrase that I usually use to help you remember this property of wave speed that it's quite constant as you change many different parameters, but there, there are a few parameters that as you change it, it'll change the wave speed is this, that wave speed is a property of the medium. So all these other parameters that I've changed, maybe with the exception of damping, um, I wasn't changing the property of the medium. I was just changing how I was setting off the wave. When I changed the tension, that's when I changed the property of this string medium. And changing the tension turns out changes the wave speed. And there's one other parameter that'll change the wave speed that you can't control on this simulation, it's just how much mass there is in the string. Yeah. So that's a illustration of a wave propagation speed and how 
it's constant under many different circumstances. And um, when you change the property of the medium itself, then you change the propagation speed. 